many of you that know me know I'm, I'm kind of interested in security in general because having, you know, it, it, we just need to be. I'm also interested in privacy. Um, and uh, I look for tools that help me have that on my side. Right? So present, I give presentation all the time about password managers where you can, run a, you can store data under your control and make sure it's, it makes it easier to have different credentials for every site, for every application that you're logging into. Um, uh, oh, Aaron's not here. So GitHub, somebody just broke into an account on GitHub and it turns out the guy was using, the, using a password to log into his, his project on GitHub. And it was the same password he was using from so, for some social media thing and to log into his, his refrigerator's cloud account or something like that. Oh, whatever. So, but he was using the same password. So somebody snarfed it somewhere else and then were able to use it to, to log into his GitHub account and then compromise uh, the project with some uh, PHP library that he, that he runs, uh, maintains. That's a bad thing, right? So I talk about uh, uh, using, I use KeePassXC at this point, or key pass X, uh, so you can, you can keep, use different credentials everywhere. And I've been talking about that for now for over 10 years, right? Um, and that was the other, another presentation I gave while I was in Germany. Uh, I also talked for years about NoScript, which was, a, was a, which was a tool for going through and blocking JavaScript and only allowing the JavaScript that I wanted to allow. But NoScript had, was missing some features and, and it's a great tool, I still like it, but I found that Umatrix is a fantastic replacement for NoScript. It has more features, it's an easier use to use interface, and it allows me to control per domain cookies and JavaScript. We'll get, we'll get into that. So that's where this came from, is Umatrix allows me to turn off the JavaScript so I don't have to worry about somebody going through and using my computer for crypto mining and getting Bitcoin and stuff like that. If my computer is getting get Bitcoin, I want the money. I don't want somebody else to get it. Or if it's, if it, you know, one of them was one, uh, one of the uh, tech news sites was doing this, right? And I might be fine with their doing that, right? Doing SETI at home crypto mining so that the SETI at home project can get, can get money, you know, the money that's found or, you know, free software foundations or EFF or something like that. But I want, to, I want to, to, to opt in. I don't want them to just do it because I visited their website, right? Um, so I, I lock my things down a little bit more than even what I recommend for most people. So we'll get to that. So Umatrix is a web extension. Uh, so it's a security and privacy add-on for Firefox. Uh, Raymond Hill is the developer of uBlock Origin. For those of you familiar with that, many of you, many people in Plug have been using that particular one for years. Um, he kind of redesigned it, and so uBlock Origin didn't do some things, so he basically made a new version of it that did extra stuff, and that's what uMatrix is. Uh, it's also available for Chrome and other browsers. Uh, I just use Firefox, so you can go figure that out. I don't know if it's available for links. That would be awesome. All right. um, <laughs> so it's a simple interface to permit and deny web page uh, objects, uh, which include cookies, JavaScript in many different forms, uh, CSS, pictures, and video. So how did we get there? So I mentioned I, I used uh, uh, NoScript for years. I've been using, I think, NoScript for over a decade. Um, but Firefox Quantum came out where they rewrote things and they, and they moved to web extensions, um, uh, which is, uh, I think, that originated with, with Google and Chrome, but it's a new standard for doing plugins. And from what I understand, on the uh, uh, in general, it was good because the Firefox plugin mechanism was problematic in many ways. Um, but uh, so they moved after the, over to, to this to web extension. And a lot of plugins did not get updated to work as web extensions. Part of it is because they required just complete rewrites for the most part. Uh, and in some ways, they couldn't do things that they used to do. Uh, so that also became a, a problem. So when Firefox Quantum came out and I accidentally upgraded it to it because I knew it was coming and I, I was holding off and I accidentally installed it somewhere and I was like, oops, uh, no script was no longer available. And I was getting JavaScript from everywhere, and that just is not allowed. So I went looking, I, I fetched a couple of IRC channels and stuff like that, and somebody mentioned Umatrix, and he'd been using it for a while previously, but it was also available for Quantum. So I went and looked at it, and I was like, oh, this is so much better. <laughs> the interface really is much better than NoScript, and NoScript only does JavaScript, but Umatrix also does, uh, does cookies. 
It had been years since I'd had a decent cookies extension for going through and regulating what cookies I was getting. So I was very happy to, to move to that. I still have nothing bad to say about NoScript. They've now got uh, a, a quantum version of that. Um, but I, I definitely enjoy uh, U-Matrix a lot more. So I can keep describing it, or I can just show you. So that's what I've got up here is this is the, the drop-down interface for U-Matrix. Up in the upper left, you've got what domain this applies to, and we're going to get to some of the different parts of it. And then on the left column, you end up with what site the different rules apply to. So when I'm on the fsf.org site, I am, in this particular case, allowing first party, which happens to be fsf.org, because that's the first party. And I'm also, so I'm allowing fsf.org, pwiki.fsf.org, static.fsf.org, and www.fsf.org. The cool thing about this list is those are the only things that are trying to set cookies or JavaScript. So FSF isn't going through and including a whole bunch of other sites in, in their site. So I can also see where it's going through and trying to pull cookies and JavaScript from through this simple interface. And then I can very simply allow or disallow. Like if I didn't want static stuff from FSF, I could say no and, turn the, and disable those. Uh, and then up along the top, in the, the not quite the top, the almost top, is the different types of, of things that are being allowed. Uh, and then the very top are different tools. For the most part, I'm just going to ignore those, learn those on your own. Uh, the big thing is if you go set new temporary rules for the particular website, there's a way to go through and say, save this so you have it the next time you, you come to that site. Um, if you don't save those, those temporary rules and you restart your browser, those temporary rules, rules go away. All right. So the, the elements of the grid, I've already mentioned the site. Now notice up here we've got the light blue for www. and then in dark blue for fsf.org. So that tells me what site I'm on, but it also tells me what site I'm looking at rules for. So I'm on www.fsf.org, but the rules that I'm looking at are actually the rules that apply to fsf.org. I could click on the www and say, okay, for the whole domain, fully qualified domain, make these rules apply. Or I could look at just .org, or just a dot after the org, right? Um, so you can look at domain, subdomains and superdomains and so forth uh, and see what are being, what's being allowed. The, uh, the, the dark green are things that are explicitly allowed. I think they're showing up as green. Yeah, yeah. It's because the dark green are things that are explicitly allowed, and the light green things are the things that are implicitly allowed. So the rule I have, I know because I've done this before, but the rule I have that in place for this particular image is I'm allowing all from first party. And because fsf.org and their subdomains are first party in this particular case, those are being implicitly allowed. The red is things that are, are explicitly denied, and the light red are the things that are implicitly denied. They're denied because of some other rule. We'll get to those. So first party I mentioned, the, the, we're going through and saying, the domain you're on is the first party for that particular domain, right? So if I go to phoenixlinux.org, the first party will be phoenixlinux.org for that. If I go to eff.org, first party will be eff.org. Whatever the, it is that's the main domain for the site that you're on. Uh, again here, this is the domain allowance, which domain is allowed. Uh, so let's talk about what the different uh, uh, um, column header headings mean. Cookies. Those are cookies. Are, are we allowing cookies from that particular domain? Notice that, uh, so this is, when I'm on the fsf.org site, or on, a, on, a, uh, on a, a site, a page within that domain, which of these subdomains are allowed to set cookies? So I could say, okay, again, back to my example, I could say static.fsf.org is not allowed to set cookies, or it is allowed to set cookies. In this case, none of them are trying to, which is awesome. There, sh there should be more sites that do that but I can then allow per domain. And that includes third-party domains, right? If, if uh, uh, fsf.org were to set up their, uh, 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 start using a Mastodon instance, to go back to my other presentation, set up a ma start using a Mastodon instance, and they were saying, hey, you can check with us on Mastodon here, then it might show Mastodon.social as another domain, and I can allow or disallow based on what I want to do. 
Um, so, okay. So cookies are, uh, I think everybody at this point knows that they're small files kept on the computer to track you. But since I was listing things I want to do in there. CSS is formatting and layout for your, uh, for website layout. Uh, images are pictures. Uh, and then media, media is video and sound. Uh, by default, notice that CSS and image are dark green. So what does the dark green indicate? There's a specific rule allowing that. So by default in uh, uh, Umatrix, it has rules that allow CSS and images from all sites. Right? So all the other things are not allowed implicitly except for one, which is frame. And that being dark red tells me that frame is explicitly denied. So you don't end up with subframes and stuff like that unless you've gone through and, and gone through and specifically allowed them. Uh, script, S XHR are both JavaScript. So script is regular JavaScript. XHR is a JavaScript callback. So like for instance, uh, the first site that I ever used that, that, that I, I started allowing this for, this tells you how long I've been doing this for, is when Google Maps first came out, uh, not when it first came out, but not too terribly long after that, they started basically using JavaScript to go through and request other sections of the map so that you didn't have to do a page reload every time you moved around on the map. Uh, so those types of things where you've got something on the page that is going and requesting more information or sending information back to a server. You don't know, right? So that's XHR. Uh, frames or iframes, if they want to bring something up. And then other is other stuff. I forget what's in the other stuff. There was like three or four things, and at least one of them was in some language I don't speak. I didn't get it. So uh, if you're interested in those, look at it. But they're not denied by default. So you know, I don't know what it is, but I'm not allowing it. I'll call it good until it, it, it bites me. All right, live demo. OK. So I mentioned the Free Software Foundation. So let's go ahead and pull their site up and drop down. Uh, now, we were having trouble with the color, so I, I changed the coloring a little bit on. Oh, it's still showing up as green for you guys. So never mind. Ignore what I just said. Uh, or just ignore everything I say, whichever works for you. Um, so this is the FSF site. Uh, again, we, 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 you're getting the same, same view as what I, what I was showing you in the, in the demos inside the presentation. We can go to the Software Freedom Conservancy. Now notice here that they are pulling in content from some other domains. So from, uh, from uh, Creative Commons and from License Buttons. Now I hadn't noticed that one before. Uh, so they've got a, uh, an image coming in from LicenseButtons.net. Uh, and an image coming in from uh, i.creativecommons.org. So notice here that it's showing me both creativecommons.org, which has nothing, the top domain, or what it considers to be the top domain, uh, and then also the i.creative.commons.org, the specific do domain that's sending, that's wanting to, uh, or th where that the page is requesting the image from that particular specific domain. Now again, I'm a lot, I, in this case, I've allowed the first party so I've got script from the Software Conservancy. They have some JavaScript on their website. And that is being allowed by default. This is still the, the, the default setup for uh, um, Umatrix. Um, if the i.creative.commons had JavaScript that they were requesting, then that would show up as a number for how many JavaScript uh, uh, objects it's trying to go through and, and load. And in this particular case, they would, be not, they would not be allowed. They would be denied implicitly because I don't have third-party JavaScript enabled. All right. Now let's go look at Newegg. Oh, I need to reload this. See, see the number up here in black? You, it's, it's pretty pretty small for you guys to read. It's up to 38. What do we have for, for, uh, for if we saw, oh, it's not in here. I think, maybe, I think that's the number of objects it's blocking, something like that. So Newegg lets everybody spy on you. Right? I'm a fan of Newegg. There's a lot of other companies, including one I was recently working for that had, uh, at one point, we were, we were having an issue. And I started looking at web bugs. And we were, we were over 60 web bugs on our, on our primary website. And I was like, you know, that might be why we have slow loading times. But um, anyway, <laughs> we took care of the one that was causing the specific problem. Uh, so they have lots of other stuff in here. 
um, including different things. So they've got uh, um, the Newegg site. They also have Newegg images that come. They have their own CDN or their, a CDN that they're using. They also have static.newegg or new static somewhere, a whole bunch of other things. They've got a couple of different Google things in here. Uh, they are, uh, oh, I thought they, I thought they were letting social media sp try to spy on you as well, but I guess that, oh, that's what it is. I haven't allowed enough things in order to pull in the social media stuff. If I start allowing things, we'll get even more stuff coming from Newegg. It's, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of scary. Um, but, and, and I, as I say, I actually use Newegg. I buy from them. They're doing a lot of things to stop patent trolls. I just wish they would fix their site. Um, and I'm going to continue uh, shaming them publicly until, until they do. So I will probably be doing that my last day on, the, on this planet. But, you know. um, so, but they're a good example of all the different pieces that are in here. And as I say, I can go in and I can click on the top for this C1 Newegg images. I've now enabled those. Now they haven't loaded. I have to come up and hit the recycle button, the re reload button, in order to, to start getting those, those objects as well. But I can also come down and go, trust wave. Yeah, no. And I can explicitly block that. And now, if I were to do something somewhere else, that object is, th those, that type of object, so scripts from sealserver.trustwave.com are explicitly blocked. And, you know, since I haven't tried it and we're live, what the heck, let's see what happens. I click that, they're still blocked. All right. I don't like that. So I just explicitly get rid of them all. Um, so I've got these pieces here. As I say, I haven't saved the changes though. So if I quit the browser and start up again, then c1.newegimages.com will no longer be allowed to do scripts. And sealserver.trustwave.com will be just implicitly or, or implicitly denied not explicitly denied like it is. I can also come up and save the changes that I made. I think that's saving. No, this is saving. The, the save all temporary changes, yes. Right? So I can do that. I think this other one is I can disable and enable. Yes, yeah, filtering at that scope. So look at these different icons up here as well. Um, but now if I want these rules to take effect, I need to reload the page and they will take effect. I'm not going to do that right now because I have more live demo. All right. So uh, for those of you that are familiar with Lightbeam, or for those of you not familiar with Lightbeam, Lightbeam is a Firefox add-on, which I think came from the Ford Foundation of, of all places, right? So uh, they're, they're adding stuff to spy on you in your car, but they're letting you know about it when you use your browser. It's awesome. Now, um, so they, they worked with uh, Netscape years ago and created a, um, an add-on that then got renamed Lightbeam. And Lightbeam shows you the sites that you're looking at and the different types of connections you've got to them. So here, this is the Newegg site, and you can see the different uh, um, uh, cookies that are being set for that site or being tried to, try, trying to be set for this site. And you can move around and do stuff. Uh, I don't know where the w3.org stuff came from. But I'm going to go ahead and reload now. And you can use the regular browser reload, but since we're talking about the the plugin, I'll use the plugin reload. So now I've got, I had 15 scripts from, from c1.newegg images. It went up to 28. They went and found friends. Right? Hey, you come over to the party. Uh, the seal server is still, is, is still disabled. Let's go back over here. I still have only a couple of different things. So let's go and just Go hog wild. Or did I just implicitly deny everything? No, I didn't. There we go. <gasps> Ooh, look at all that stuff. <laughs> so I like, one of the things, as I say, I like about, about Umatrix is it gives me, a, I think, a really nice interface to see what's being allowed, what's being requested, and, and gives me information about why, I, why it is that I'm allowing them. And it gives me a very inter simple, as the, as the text person in the room, right? Aaron isn't here tonight, so I can make that claim. Uh, as, the, as the text only person in the room, I like that I've got a very simple, easy graphical interface to use to, to, to get to this stuff. Um, there's a text interface too, we'll get to that. Um, 
and it makes it really easy for me to allow, disallow, and so forth. So for instance, um, uh, one of the other places that I buy stuff from is Humble Bundle. Well, in order to buy things from Humble Bundle nowadays, you have to allow Google stuff because they're doing CAPTCHA. And you have to allow Stripe because that's who they're doing their payments through. So I can set those up, save it, and now next time I go through, through and buy something from, from uh, Humble Bundle, I've already got the things in place that I need. Or you can do like what I did, which is I allowed the Stripe stuff and saved it, and Google doesn't get to spy on me until I've decided I'm going to buy something. And if I'm going to buy something, I know I have to go allow a couple of Google things in order to get the CAPTCHA stuff up. So, um, but anyway, so you've, you can do it however you want. You can be paranoid like me, or you can be less paranoid. Um, as far as the, the paranoid stuff, we'll get to this in a second, but I'll show here. The first party, I generally turn that off. I don't even allow the, the main site to do JavaScript stuff unless it is something that I need. So for instance, Humble Bundle, I would normally not allow it to do JavaScript. In fact, the new website, I don't allow it to do JavaScript until it is a, I'm trying to buy something. And if it requires JavaScript to look at whatever it is they're selling, I don't buy it. They just annoy me and I don't buy things from them. Right? Uh, Target, if you're listening, I can't use your website. Oh, too bad. Um, so I, uh, um, uh, wait, so I like the fact that we've got a simple interface, and I don't know what this does, but hey, let's see if that resets back to where things were. Looks like it. Cool. Um, and then you can, inside of uh, Lightbeam, you can reset data to erase what you've had and then reload the page and see what you're getting this time. Um, so this is a really nice tool. It's not showing up here because of the projector and some other things, but you can uh, you can see which sites it's trying to set set things for, and you can also see uh, um, connections. Like one of the things you'll see a lot. This is not doing it because the way I've got it set up. Uh, but for the places that are allowing Facebook, Facebook invites friends and starts bringing in other domains and stuff. And so you'll see the Facebook triangle, and then you'll see other things hanging off of it. But you'll also see, for instance, the, the, the Facebook triangle. And if I went to some other site that's also allowing Facebook, you'll see the main thing for that site, and they're connecting on Facebook. So you can also see the things that are allowing, that are allowing you to, to, to be tracked by one site across multiple places. Uh, you know, if you, if you want to really get kind of paranoid for a while, allow cookies and JavaScript from Facebook and from DoubleClick, and then just go click on a bunch of random things that you saw advertised in on TV. Yeah, they are doing that. OK. Um, I think that covers the thing I want from the, for the live demo. Oh, not quite. Uh, actually, yeah, it does. And then we'll come back to here. Where are we? Are? Live demo. All right. So config, config options that I recommend, uh, or that I find is, is good. The colorblind friendly, I had to turn on for this presentation so the projector would show things better. Um, I think that's awesome that they've got that because their default is red and, and green. For lots of friends of mine, those are gray and gray. But the nice thing is you can have dark gray or light gray. You just don't know which dark gray it is. Is it dark gray, yes, or dark gray, no? They don't know. Right? Is it light gray, yes, light gray, no? They don't know. They're both gray. Um, so I like the, th the fact that, that he added that into, uh, has that in there by default. Uh, and there's other things that he does to make it a little bit easier. There's, there's more uh, uh, um, uh, uh, border on the buttons and so forth to make it a little bit easier to see as well. Um, uh, it gives you an option to delete block cookies. So if you've blocked them and you've got a cookie, it'll go through and delete that for you. Uh, delete local storage so that if you've got go going through and allowing cookies, it'll go through and clean those out for you once in a while. So if you're like me where you keep a browser instance up for months at a time, uh, then, then you don't have to worry about those cookies hanging around the whole time. Uh, clearing the browser cache, again, cleaning stuff up for you. Um, well, they'll spoof the HTTP refer string, so making it a little bit more difficult for people to, to track you. Uh, they will, uh, I don't actually enable this for the most part because uh, it just, just breaks too many sites still. Uh, although EFF and Google are really trying to fix that uh, by, by EFF by reminding them that, that it's foolish to not be uh, uh, all secure and Google a little bit by strong arming them. They're going, if it's not secure, we're just not going to search your stuff and tell people about it. So, if you want them to see it, get get a get get an SSL certificate and keep everything everything in there. Uh, so anyway, so you can forbid mixed content. 
so you don't end up with unsecured co content on a secure web page. Uh, and then uh, there's another thing, uh, block all hyperlink auditing attempts. Uh, I recently found that there was a problem that I was having that might be due to that, um, but I think it was actually that there was a new push of, of a couple of JavaScript libraries that were foolish. Google links did not work for a little while, and then suddenly they started working, and I didn't have to change anything on my, on my side. I think they realized that their, their new UI for links didn't work right for, for trying to track people. Uh, block lists. So you can go through and uh, download it. It actually has it set up automatically to grab a couple of block lists, but you can grab, there's some more that you can add. Uh, so it, block, it grabs in information about known malware ad and tracking servers so that it will go through and try to block those for you en masse and just go, oh, by the way, double click is all ads. You know, um, I, don't know, I don't know if that's on one of the block lists, but I, I would presume it is. Um, and uh, then the def by default, they block all things and frame, but then they go back and allow CSS and images. And we'll, we'll get to that when I go back to the next part of the live demo, which is the rules. So go to configuration. By the way, I just saw something the other day. Ghostery might be selling ad stuff, so I'm going to be uninstalling it everywhere. Maybe consider that as well. Uh, preferences and go to rules. So text interface, it's still a, a web browser, but you know, it's still plain text. All right. Um, so now you can go through and add your own rules. You can type things in and add stuff. Uh, you can add them temporarily, or you can commit them and save them. Uh, and here uh, we've got the, the block. So the, the um, uh, I forget what the first one is. The first one, yeah, the first one is the site that it's, it's uh, uh, going to. So star is all sites. Uh, the second one is the subdomain it applies to. So star, again, is all sites. So any site on any site. Uh, and then the, the third one is what type of object. So I'm saying any site, on any site, disallow all things. So it's explicitly blocking all things. Right? Then it goes back in and it says, oh, for all sites and all sites, allow CSS, allow uh, or allow CSS and images, but continue blocking frames. So frames are blocked because the first rule, but they're also blocked because, of, or not the first rule, but the, the star, star, star block, but they're also explicitly blocked. So you have to explicitly enable them if, uh, in order for, for things to start popping up. And then they go through and do first party allow, and I usually go through and delete that off of my browsers. There's a couple of them where I allow it because I'm doing things where I, I just know I'm going to have to deal with JavaScript stuff. Um, so I, uh, on some, of, uh, some browser instances, I allow it. But most of them, I delete that, and I have to go explicitly allow a domain to have uh, JavaScript if they, if, if they need it for whatever it is I'm doing that day. All right. Uh, there are more pieces here. I'm not going to go through all the different uh, settings. Um, so go explore on your own. Uh, this is the, the block list I was talking about under assets. Uh, I don't even remember what more is. I don't know if I figured that out. Uh, and information about it. Um, all right. Back to the presentation. So now at this point, I haven't tested this, and so go experiment on your own. Find out what your particular needs are. But I'm presuming that you really don't need no script anymore. You don't need uBlock Origin. It's the same guy, you know, and he's basically created this to, to replace, to do uBlock Origin Plus. Uh, and then AdBlock Plus. Now, AdBlock Plus is, is coming at it from a different perspective. Their thing is about blocking ads, and so they've got some other things in there. I think AdBlock Plus has a, has a uh, 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 or used to have a way for you to put artwork up where the ad was. So you, it would down things from the Getty images or other places that, actually, those are probably not publicly available. But some, some publicly available art uh, uh, source. And so where you would have a banner ad, it would, just, it would be some, somebody's drawing and stuff, which was pretty cool. I actually set that up for my wife years ago. Uh, and, and, uh, and, and it was great, uh, except for it didn't work so well. So, but that was 10 years ago. So who knows nowadays. Um, so anyway, you probably don't need those. But it depends on what, it, what feature you were using. So you block or, uh, you matrix might not be providing all the features from those. And there might be a feature from one of those that you still want. Um, but the, the, the majority of what those, those add-ons are doing, uh, Umatrix is taken care of. 
Uh, and then we have Village Platypi to fill this up. Thanks to Brian for creating this, uh, uh, this wonderful image for me. Uh, <laughs> and again, for thanks for, for contacting me. So thank you for sitting through this and, and coming. Uh, are there any questions? Yes. What would be some of the things that you matrix uh, would not be providing that, say, uBlock Origin does? Or, I mean, you said it's the same guy, so is, is everything in there? I think it's, I don't use uBlock Origin, so I don't know. But I've looked at it and it was doing something similar. Uh, that the, the example I can give of, uh, of those three is the advertising thing where the ad block plus is specifically targeting ads on sites. And so there are some things that they're doing where they're looking for particular types of images as opposed to just all images, right? Um, and, uh, and then as I said, there were some other things where like they were replacing things and stuff like that. Uh, a feature that NoScript had that I haven't yet verified that you, uh, that you matrix has is uh, NoScript will try to replace common uh, scripts that are out there. So basically there's a whole bunch of Google JavaScript that lots of people use on their site instead of having to create their own uh, 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 script to go through and look at like what is the valid email address, right? They'll get the incorrect answer from Google instead. They don't get it right. Not yet. Um, but so no matrix has said, okay, I've created JavaScript that will provide the same functionality or at least provide uh, results so that the things that are calling that won't break. Because I might be using, you know, the, the site might be have a JavaScript call to the, to the Google JavaScript. And if the Juvel, Ju, Juvel, Google JavaScript is not there, then the site's script might break because it's not there. So no script is saying, okay, I'm going to provide something to try to make this, a shim to try to make that work. Um, I don't know that, that Umatrix is doing that. So it's more the more in-depth stuff that it does, not necessarily the face value things. Probably, but it, but it depends on what it is that you're using it for, right? It, it, if, uh, if I was using NoScript specifically because I wanted to, I hated Google and I wanted to make sure there was no Google in my life. Good luck with that, right? I, and I'm, I'm, not a, I, I, I'm actually uh, mostly a fan of Google. I just don't want them spying on me everywhere, right? Um, the... Uh, um, so, if, but if that was that was the main reason I was using NoScript. Well, then right now I can't say that UMatrix is providing that feature. So, if there's something in UBlock Origin that you specifically wanted to use, I don't know. Is there something specific you want to know about? Maybe I I can answer that. It it wasn't anything in particular. It's mostly like it. I don't know how the ad blocking things work, but it's mostly ad blocking and um, and and the JavaScript blocking. Okay. They're just face value of those two, which I, I'm pretty sure those three applications do. Okay. Well, I would say uh, my suggestion would be uh, figure out a couple of sites that it does a really good job of that for you and, and where you can see it's doing what you want it to do. Create a new browser profile, install UMatrix, uh, Umatrix and not the other tools, and see if you can get the same behavior out of Umatrix. Do a little clicky clicky. It's, it's, it's pretty easy. Uh, uh, stuff and and as you noticed, if you clicky clicky the wrong thing, you can unclicky, which is nice because I clicky clicky the wrong thing all the time. <laughs> Just I was going to add for ad block, you have um, XPath based blocking, which you made yourself do. That's probably the largest. XPath. Ad block will block specific elements in a page based on its XPath. Oh, okay. Um, it's a modified XPath, but roughly XPath, and you block doesn't do that. It blocks. Sort of all what is XPath? <laughs> so you're, you're basically, are you saying it's looking at the actual site structure and saying, okay, on this site over here is a, is, uh, yeah, page, yeah, page structure, yeah. Over here on this page, I know that there's, there's a little ad block, and so it's actually looking for the, con the, the, the HTML that creates that ad block, and it's Blocking right. that particular so for instance, you subset of elements with a specific tag, or elements with a specific sort of partial structure, and then a tag inside that, things like that. And okay. XPath is just a way of, it's a oh. standard for referencing specific things within a page. So if you don't like things yelling at you, you could use Adblock Plus to replace H1s with like H3s. Just say it nice, man. No, you can block <laughs> H1, but you wouldn't be able to replace it. I can't do, okay. <laughs> don't yell at me! <laughs> right. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, any other uh, questions? No? All right. Well, thank you again for coming out. Uh, hopefully, we will see you next month and at other events here in town.